So now we're talking about Kirchhoff's law or Kirchhoff's law. People pronounce it different in different ways. And I'm sure you are familiar with Kirchhoff's law and you've come across it at one point yes. or the other. Now, Kirchhoff's law are divided into two major laws. We have the Kirchhoff's current law and we have the Kirchhoff's voltage law. And that's what we have, the, we know, as the KVL for the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the KCL as the Kirchhoff's current law. The current law is just telling us that the sum of current entering a node is equal to the sum of current leaving the node. So if I have a system where, okay, if I have a node here, and we have a particular current flowing out, current flowing out on the node, and we have current flowing into the node. It's just telling us that the sum of this one, this A, B, and C, telling us that the current entering the node is equal to the sum of current leaving, or the sum of current entering. How many currents are entering just A? Okay, let me say, we have another one, D. D entry. So the sum of current entering, A plus D. A plus D will be equal to the sum of current leaving, which is B is leaving, C is leaving, C plus B. So that's just what this current is saying. Now, when you have a particular node, in this case, it's any node, just of that node, the sum of current entering the node will be equal to the sum of current leaving the node. And that's what we have here. The sum of summation of current entry is not summation of current leaving. Then voltage law is talking about the algebraic sum of voltage around a closed loop is zero. It's trying to lower. I'm going to explain what a closed loop is. What a loop simply means is any closed part of a circuit. When we start drawing circuits now, you observe we have um, for example, this circuit that I have down here, let's say this is 12 volts, and um I have a resistor here. I have another resistor here. So this is a closed loop. You can see we started from this point and we went through this point, coming back to the starting point. So it's a closed loop. So the original sum of voltages, the vote, there's a voltage here, 12 volts. There's going to be a voltage drop here. Let's say V1. There's going to be another voltage drop here. Let's say V2. The original sum of all the voltage drops, or all the voltage around a closed loop must be equal to zero. That's what Ketchel's voltage law is talking about. So quickly, let's solve problems. Because when we solve problems, we understand it better. So I'm solving, I'm giving us, um, giving us a problem. We solve it together. I can solve more and also give you some to solve. Because I believe the more you do it, the more you understand. Um, I think my job here is just to make you understand these things. So, are free to ask me questions as we proceed and we will examine it together if there's any doubts. All right, so the first question we'll be solving. Let me draw the circuit. Try to conserve space. This is five volts. The five volt source. We have a resistor here. We have another resistor here. We have another resistor here. And we have another source here. And we have this. So this is the whole circuit. Now the values, this is two ohms. This is eight ohms. And this is four ohms. This is three volts. So this is a simple circuit that has two sources. Remember I said that if it was just one source, a good approach to to to, to analyze this would be to use um, series and parallel networks, series parallel um, method yes. analysis. But now we have two sources. A very good approach is to use the Kirchhoff's um, method, the Kirchhoff's laws to analyze the circuits. We have some currents now. When you have a question like this. We are going to make some assumptions. We're going to assume the, 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 the direction of the flow of current. We're going to assume the direction of the flow of the current. We will assume that, okay, since conventionally current or we know that current flows from negative to positive, let's assume that the current, this I1, for example, let me call this I1. Let's say current I1 flows in this direction. 
Now, when it gets to this point, you know that there will be a split. So let's say it splits to the current I2. And since at this point, this, this is negative to positive, so that means the current is flowing down. So we can assume too that the current is flowing in this direction, I3. So we've we'll been able to label this I1, I2, I3. Now, you have to understand that when current flows through a resistor, there will be a voltage drop. So if current flows from the positive to the negative of a resistor, there's a voltage drop. Let's call this V1. If current flows through this resistor from the positive to the negative, there will be a voltage drop. Let's call this V2. And if current flows through this resistor from the positive to the negative, there will be a voltage drop. Let's call this V3. Then when I'm going through my loop, the first sign I meet is what I use. So we have to, in um, Ketchup's law, we have to assume loop direction. The, 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 the part we want to use to analyze the circuit, the loop direction. So I'm going to use this part like this. This is my direction. I'm going to go around this loop this way. Then I'm going to use this one to this clockwise direction. So this is my loop one. This is my loop two. Now, some who may say we have another loop outside here. Yes, they are right, but we, can, we don't really need that. We can do this, we don't dance in this case. We don't really need that. And we can start to take it at one of these to analyze the circuits, or we take this. I think I prefer using this, the, the loops that are inside, the closed part inside. So we have loop one and loop two. We'll be able to assign signs here, plus, minus, plus, minus, and we'll be able to label it I1, I2, and I3. Now, the question says, we should find the branch current and voltages. To find branch current and voltage. So this branch, there's a voltage V1. There's a voltage of V1, we have to find V1. There's a current I1 flowing through this branch. We have to find it. Similarly, V2 and I2, V3 and I3. To solve it, the first thing we do is at this node, at the node, we can see that at this node, I1 is entering, I2 and I3 are leaving. And from KCL, KCL is telling us that summation of current entering is equal to the summation of current leaving. And so we cannot say I1 that is entering. Um. Is equals to I2 plus I3. Exactly. I2 plus I3. Thank you. We call this equation one. So we're done with the KCL part. We'll be able to find the node current, the, the, the current direct uh, the current equation at the node or at the junction. So now we want to get the loop, the loop voltages at when we go through loop, we're dealing with voltage now. So this one is dealing more of KVL. So I'm going to apply the two laws to solve the problem. KVL is talking about the voltage around this loop. And now I said my own method, I'm going in this direction. So let me say, I start from this point, I'm going this way. The first thing I see is a negative sign. So I put minus five nice. volts. I continue, I see a voltage drop here. Because it's KVL, I'm doing the voltage. I see another voltage here. And it's that the first sign I meet is plus, so I use plus V1. That's the voltage here. I continue again, I meet another, there's a voltage drop here. And that's plus V2. And KBI said that the summation of all the voltages must be equal to zero. And I say it's equal to zero. And that's my equation two. Now, from Ohm's law, you know that V is equal to IR. So this V1, same thing as. I1 R that's two I1. You agree with me? So we have minus five plus two I1 plus or V2 at this point. You know that the, the voltage drop here was as a result of the current I2 flowing through eight ohms. So V2 is also eight, eight. I2. The only thing that this uh, sign, the way we got the sign is the direction of the loop, which we just assigned. You can decide to solve the problem going anti-clockwise and see if you will get the same answer. 
even if you get a negative current value, you just know that, okay, you, you miss the direction. It doesn't affect, just move the sign and leave it as positive um, magnitude. All right, so this is equal to zero. Of course, this is the same thing as what we have up here, just that um, I'm writing this. So let me simplify this, taking the constant. I love taking my constant to the other side. So I have, I will have two I1, plus 8i2 is equal to taking this constant to the other side gives me 5. So this is the equation 2, simplified form. So please let me just add this up here. You can write it down for me. I may ask for it later. Because I'm using a small board. So I may have to rub it off anytime from now. So this is equation 2 up here. And of course, this is equation 1 here. I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. This is equation 1. So now we want to consider loop two. Let me clean all this. I want to consider loop two. For loop two, loop two, using KVL, we move in the same direction. The first sign we meet is negative, so I have my negative eight I two. I you understand it's i2 then i continue moving the first sign i meet is positive plus 4 i3 now i keep moving the first sign I meet is negative so i have my negative 3 and kvl tells us that everything must be equal to zero the algebraic sum is equal to zero and so this is my equation 3 simplifying this okay Taking this to the other side, I have minus 8i2 plus 4i3 is equal to 3. And that's equation 3. So, equation 3 is, let me put this here, minus 8i2. Please write it somewhere for me so that this I forget. So, I must this is i3 is equal to 3. So, I want to never fill up this up and write all the equations out here. So that before you rub it, before you rub it. Oh, I've done that already. But I've written it up. Okay, no problem. I've written it up. I have a question. I have a question. Okay, please ask a question. The eight, the eight ohms in the middle. Yes. Usually in mesh, for something like this, you write eight comma and bracket I2 minus I1, depending yes. on the yes. Do you understand? Yes. That that there are several ways people solve. Solve all this of mesh, KCL, KVL. Um, if you have the method, some people will say when you are in the first group, you do I1 minus I2, right? They will assign also I1, I2. That's mesh. But here now, in KVL, we are really interested in the branch network, not loop current. You understand? If I'm taking this to the I1 and I2, I'm going to be using this loop current. Round, but yeah, you can see I'm still making use of my branch currents. So yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not using that method. I'm just using this loop to understand loop one to know where I am. Loop two, you can go online. You can see some textbooks where they will do it that way, and they will get the answer. But you can still solve with this way. Now, I'm when I get to mesh, that's when I'm going to use that approach you are talking about. I'm deliberately okay. not doing that now. Do you get okay? Yes. Yeah. So you will still get the same answer. If you want to go and check it, you can go and check it out. You get the same answer. I'm just concentrating on let us see how we can really analyze. Let's really see how KCL and KVL really works. We are not really bothered about loop current here. No. Um, mesh is just an application of KCL. That's why we apply. In fact, normally KCL and KVL is not a method of analysis. It's just they are just laws that guide you in analysis. Whether you are doing mesh, nodal, you keep using those laws, these laws to analyze. But we just want to see how we can understand the laws. I have seen at this node, current living is current, and um, current entry is equal to the sum of current living. I have also seen at this point now that the original sum of all the voltages around a loop is zero. So that's what I'm really after at this point. So let me just write down. But are you? Do you understand to this point? Yes. Okay. 
Let me bring the board back to the video. Okay, bringing all my um, equations. Equation one is I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. And this equation one. Equation two is 2I1 two is confirmed. Plus I2 equals to 5. Okay. And equation 3 is saying minus 8I2 plus, plus I3, I3 is equal to 3. Equals 3. So now we have three equations. And we have three unknowns. But equation 1 has variable I1, I2, and I3. Equation 2 has variable I1 and I2, but no I3. Equation 3 has variable I2 and I3, but no I1. So what do we do? We try to compare one. Sorry, second. what did you say? Compare equation 1 to 2. Exactly, we compare. But what I would like to do here to make life easy is make um, I1 the solid of formula in equation 2 and make I2 the solid of formula in equation 3. So by then we could have gotten I1, I2. Once we plug it here, we'll be able to get I3. Do you understand? Yes. So that's just a very easy way to do it. So from equation 2, from equation 2, I want to make I1 the subject. So what I will have to be 2I1 is equal to taking this to the other side, 5, five minus 8 I2. Then I can say I1 is equal to 5 minus 8 I2 over 2. So let's still call this equation 2 because I'm not changing anything, I just rearrange it. And similarly, from equation 3, my goal in, with equation 3 is to make I2 the subject. So I'll just have I2 is equal to 3 minus, when this goes to the other side, minus 4I3 divided by minus 8. To get rid of this negative under here, I can just multiply through by minus 1, and this will be equal to minus 3 plus 4i3 over 8. Do you agree with me? This equation 3 now. Do you agree to this point? Yes. So now, um, please, I want to beg you to help me write these two equations somewhere. This equation three, I just formed an equation two. I request for them just now. We want to clean the board. Have you written them down? I'm coming. I'm written them. Okay, so now what we are going to now do now is to substitute two and three. This equation two and equation three. You substitute it into this equation one. We already know what I1 is. This is what I1 is. We know what I2 is. So now we'll just fix them I1 and I2 into this point. So I'm going to get I3. So doing that will make life easy for ourselves. All right. So from here, you can know that I3, if you rearrange this, I3 is equal to I1 minus I2. We already know what I1 is. So please tell me what I1 is. What is I1? I1 is uh... 5 minus 8I2 over 2. Yes. So that's I1 minus minus I2 is now what? Minus 3 plus 4I3 over 8. Over it exactly. So this is what we've got in I3 to be. So let's just simplify this so that we will see that we just get our answers in terms of I2 and I3, and it's easy to just solve simultaneously. So I3 opening this up will be 5 minus 8I2 over 2 minus times minus plus 3 minus 4I3 over 8. And you can say I3 is equal to taking the LCM. LCM of this will be 8. 2 in 8 is 4. 
4 times 5, 20, minus 4 times 8, 32, I2, 8 in 81, that's plus one. 3, minus 1 times this, 4, I3. Can you see this part of the board, the down part? Okay, let's just go up so that everything is preserved. Okay, let me just clean this. This part. So, up, this is what we have left. This is what we have now. Take yes. it, continue with this, we can cross multiply. Multiply both sides by eight. So we have eight I three is equal to twenty minus thirty two I two plus three minus four I three. So having this, we can just um, rearrange everything here. Eight I three will be equal to. Okay, okay. Let's rearrange everything in terms of I two and I3 at my left hand side, and all the constants are right. So I need I2 at this point. So I have 32 I2, two I2 plus 8 I3 plus 8 I3, eight I3 plus 4 I3. That's plus 12 I3. I mean, yes, it's 8 I3. When this plus this minus 4 I3 comes, it also be plus uh -huh. 4. Yeah, exactly. So you got 20. Um, let me see what is happening. So let me give you no sign that we have short y to go. So let me quickly rush and solve this one. So this is 32 i2 plus 12 i3 equals to 23. Is equal to 23. Perfect. Yeah. So let's just call this one now. This is a new equation, equation four. So we have an equation in terms of I2 and I3. But initially, we also had an equation here, equation, equation 3, yeah, in terms of I2 and I3. So let's make equation 3. We have minus 8I2 plus 4I3 is equal to 3. This is equation 3 that we had before. So having these two, we can solve them simultaneously. You agree with me, you can use simultaneous equation. I use it's very easy to use elimination method here, where you multiply this one by one, multiply this one by three, so you need 12 by three. You understand? But yeah. uh, because of time, I'll just quickly give you the, the answer. Or do you want to play around it? Should I allow you to do some, some more? I can do it myself. I should continue, Abby. I can do it myself, no, no worry. All right, so the answer we'll get when you solve everything. I1 will be equal to uh, 1.5 amps. I2 will be equal to 0.25 amps. And I3, when you get I, I the first thing you get to be I2 and I3, uh, when you get those two, you plug it into equation one to get I1. So I3 will be equal to 1.25 amps. So this is all for the current. And because also you find the branch current and the branch voltages. This is the current I1, I2, and I3 we've gotten. To get the voltage, V1 is now very simple. You already know that V1 is equal to I1 times 2. So that will be 1.5 amps times 2, and that's 3 volts. Then you know that um, v, V2 is 8 times I2. And that's 8 times um, 0 0.25. And that should give us 2 volts. Then V3. V3 is 4 times I3. And I3 is 1.25. And that should give us 5 volts. So this is all about solving this kind of problem. Ketchup's law approach. This question was gotten from Fundamentals of electrical and uh, electric circuit or so by Sadiku. This is one of the problems there. So I've been able to solve the problem for you. It doesn't, it did not put only the answer there. This is the solution to the problem there. So you can check it out and see how to you can use your method, the other method you know, using mesh 
style to solve it and see if you get the same answer. But I think it's a very straightforward um, way playing around the branches. So have you gotten everything? Yes. Okay, let me just do one more question on Ketchup so that I'm sure that you've gotten everything. Okay, so now we have this question here. I want to use Ketchup's laws to analyze this circuit. I want to find I1, I2, and I3, which are the branch currents. So now I think that in solving questions like this, you may sometimes make assumptions. And the assumption, you are just assuming um, the direction of the flow of the current. You are not too certain. If after you finish solving and you get the negative value for current, of course, you know that means you went the wrong direction. But the magnitude will still be correct. The value itself will still be correct. So we assume that since this um, voltage source, we assume current flows from negative to positive. So we have the direction for I1. Then here too, this is another source. We know that it's not only this source that's going to affect the activity of this circuit. This another source here affecting, this another source also affecting. And current is going to flow from negative to positive. So we can also assume this is a large voltage. Let's assume that the current will be forced to flow in this direction. So let's call this one um, I2. So current flow in this direction, I2. Then we, we will see that, okay, current is flowing into this node. Current is flowing into this node. Definitely current should flow out of the node. So let's say the current, these two magnitudes will force current to flow through this point. And let's call this I3. After we solve our question, we don't get positive answers for current. We know that we assume the wrong direction. So now I told you that whenever current flows through a resistor, there will be a voltage drop. And here there will be a voltage drop. Let's call this V1. When current flows into this one, there will also be a voltage drop. Let's call this V2, V3, or this I3. And when current flows, this is positive, negative, because following this direction is positive and negative. So let's call this V2. And this is our node. So let's quickly solve this. As the node, of course, now the node we are trying to apply the law of KCL. Current entry, the sum of current entry in the, the node is equal to the sum of current leaving the node. And um, okay, let me see so the All right, so I think it's clearer now. Yes. Okay. All right, so at this point, KCL, we can see that I1 is entering this node, I2 is also entering the node. So we can say that I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 which are one, because I3 is leaving. I1 is entering, I3 is entering, I3 is leaving. The original sum of current entering is equal to that leaving. That's equation one. Now, I want to consider loop one. For the first loop, we're assuming this clockwise direction. And we're moving, the first thing we see is a negative sign for the 10 volts. We keep going, we see the positive sign plus V1. But V1 is the same thing as 5I1 because uh, v equals to i r so that's five i one we keep going we meet the positive sign here and we are we take that sign positive sign then v3 is 10 i3 so 10 i3 then we keep moving down here in this same loop and we see the positive sign and that's positive sign for two volts and that's all we go back to the beginning and the original sum of voltages around the loop is equal to zero, that's KCL, KVL rather. So this equation two, let me simplify this. I love taking constants to the other side. So I have five I1 plus 10 I3 is equal to, so this is minus 10 plus two, that's minus eight. Then when it goes to the other side, it comes eight. So this equation two, I already was just to simplify it further. Now, considering the second loop, For the second loop, we go in the same clockwise direction. We first of all get minus two, minus two, minus 10 I3. Consider in case of- Minus 
once I put my signs, I don't, once I've assumed my sign and my directions, I don't change it even when I go to the next loop. Yeah. Yeah, just take note of that. That's very important. So you see, I'm still using this minus 10 I3. They're moving at this point. This is minus 10 I2. So I have minus 10 I2. Then I have plus 15. Coming back to the beginning, that's the end, and it's equal to zero. So simplifying further, I just hope you can see this part of the board. I want to move constant here. So I have minus 10 I2 minus 10 I3. Then I have 15 minus 2, that's 13. Going to the other side comes equal to minus 13. Minus 13. And then equation 3. So What do we do from this point now? We have equation one, two, three. Equation one has variable I1, I2, and I3. Equation two has variable, uh, equation two has variable I1 and I3. Why equation three has variable I2 and I3? So what we can do is to make from um, equation one, or from equation two rather, we make I1 the sort of formula. Then from equation two, from equation three rather, we make I2 the solid of formula, and we get those two values and plug I1 and I2 here, so that we get I3, just like what we did in the previous uh, example. So I'll be able to, I want to rub this off. Let me rub this off. So from equation two now, from equation two, we want to make, want to make um, I1, the solid of formula from equation two, and equation two is five, five I one plus ten I three is equal to eight. Am I right? Yes. Five I one plus ten I three is equal to eight. This was our equation two. Making I one the solid of formula, we have five I one is equal to eight. Take this to the other side, minus ten I three. Divide both sides by five, so we have I one is equal to 8 minus 10 I3 over 5. This is equation 2 because all we did was just to rearrange it. So same thing, equation 2. So we have 8 minus 10 I3 divided by 5. Now, we want to do the same thing from equation 3. We want to make I2 the subject of formula. So I'll be rubbing this up. Have you gotten all this? Can I continue? Yes. All right. So. So from equation, from equation three, from equation three, equation three normally, <clears throat> equation three normally is minus ten i two minus ten i three, and that is minus minus thirteen exactly. So minus ten i two minus ten i three is equal to thirteen. Taking I2, the sort of formula, we have minus 10 I2 is equal to taking all this one to the other side, minus 13 plus 10, 10 I3. I3. Divide both sides by minus 10, we have I2 is equal to minus 13 plus 10 I3 divided by minus 10. To get rid of this negative under, we multiply by minus 1 and we get 13 minus 10 i3 over 10. So this is equation three. So now we've gotten i2 and we've gotten i1. All we just need to do is to plug it into equation one. Remember equation one told us that i1 plus i2 is equal to i3. So we just add the i2 and the i1 we've gotten before and we get our i3. So that's what I'll be doing now. And then um, from equation one, we know that I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. So we've gotten our I1 to be I3 is now equal to I1. What is I1? I1 is 8 minus 10 I3. 
you are five. While um, I2 is 13, and your step I3 over 10. So what we, do we do here? We quickly take the LCM. Our LCM is 10. 5 and 10, that's 2. 2 times 8, 16 minus, In minus, minus 20, 20 I3, yes. 10 and 10, 1 plus 13 minus 10 I3. So that's equal to I3 here. Yeah. So what do we do? We cross multiply and we get something like 10 I3 because to 16 minus 20 I3 plus 13 minus 10 I3. So what do we do here? We take all the variables. In fact, the good thing now is that everything is already I3 in terms of I3. So we just take all the I3 to this left side and leave all our constants here. So we have 10 I3. 10 I3 plus 20 I3 plus 10 I3. Then keep it on the constant. So we have 16 and 13. So 16 plus 13. All right. So let me just clean the board this up part so that. All right, so having all this, we have 10 I3 plus 20 I3 plus 10 I3, that's going to be 40 I3. That's equal to 16 plus 13 is what? 29. So easily we know that our I3 is equal to 29 divided by 40. And what is that? 0 0.725. 725. Okay, arms. So invariably, this I3 was in the right direction. So we are getting a positive current, which is normally yeah. should be. So now we've gotten I3. We can put the value of I3 into maybe equation two. So I'll be able to get I1. Remember that equation two, the new equation two we got was I1 is equal to eight minus 10 I3 over five. So that's just simply going to be 8 minus 10 into at least now 0 0.725 over 5. And so when you solve everything, you get I1 to be equal to 0 0.15 amps. 0 0.15 amps. And that's also in the right direction, obviously. That's in the right direction. And so, having I1 and having I3, getting I2 becomes very simple because from equation one, from equation one, from equation one, you can see that I1 plus I2 was equal to I3. So that means, that implies that I2 is equal to I3 minus I1. So our I2 will be equal to I3. Our I3 was 0 0.725. And also is our I1, 0 0.15. And that should give us I2 will be equal to 0 0.575. So we have I2 to be this. We have I1 to be 0 0.15. And we have I3 to be 0 0.725 amps. So that way we will be able to satisfy these conditions to find I1, I2, and I3. We've done that already. So let me just quickly give you maybe a five minutes class work. With all the answers here, you've got in I1, I1, I2, I3. Just find the values of B1, B2, and B3. Okay. So I'm sure that's very simple. So just in the next few uh, minutes, just tell me the answer. Just to be sure you really understand how to continue from there. V1 is 0.75. V1 is what? 
0.75. Ok. V2 is 5.7 volts. Ok. And V3 is 7 points. 7 points, what's it? That's it. 7.25 volts. 7.25. That's 7.25, right? Yes. Okay. Then uh, we said V2. V2 should be 5.75. Yes. And um, V1 should be... 0.75 volts. Exactly. So it shows that you already understand how to work with branches now. So when we go in our next class, well, I, I can't really say, I'll check what the syllabus and the stuff you sent to me, but I know we'll start playing with the application of KCL and KBL. The application of KCL is mesh analysis, while the application of um, KBL is nodal analysis. So I think that should be all for this class. Any question, please? You said you were going to give me some advice. 